That's all right, we'll wait for the, the hecklers and the bystanders to... <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. That's the Lord. That's the Lord. Y'all gonna have to come move over here. Set, set. I want you to sit in front of your daddy, cause I, I've seen, I've seen this kind in church before. And you have to put them in front of their daddies. You know, growing up in church, you know. I know y'all, some of y'all have experienced this, maybe some of you haven't, but you know, they made us, and, and the ushers can go ahead and pass out the envelopes and stuff, but they made us, when we was growing up in church, the youth had to sit on the front two rows. That's good. It was, man. Was you know, you, you sat in the back, you know, you got a little bit more lead room with your hands and stuff, when the, when the preacher sat and way up there looking down on you, man, it was, it was hard to pass notes and stuff. Did y'all ever do that in church? Was no. that just me? It was just you. Just me. Well, it wasn't just me. Now, wait a minute now. This is me. I, I can be honest and say it was mostly the women in the youth group that was doing all the that was doing all the note passing. You know, we had that same problem in the Garden of Eden too, you know. Us guys, we just we just uh, I know. I might get I might get rushed. I know it. Careful what I say. No, I'm just teasing. We had a you know, I've got some great memories growing up in church, you know, and this, uh, you know, I'm so thankful my, my pastor that I grew up with, I was such a rebellious kid, you know, and it wasn't intentional, you know, it was just, I was just being a teenager, you know, just doing what teenagers do. And, uh, you know, he stayed on me all the time. Can you imagine my hair? My hair was too long. And, you know, my hair wasn't long back then. My hair just, it grew out like a chia pet, you know. So it's like, they had to bring in the bushwhackers to cut my hair. It didn't grow there down, it grew is. up. There he is. There it is. Yeah. That was, I was, I was 21 now. Who daddy? Who is that? Look at that boy. Daddy. His future's so bright, he got to wear shades. I tell you what, you got to watch this produ production crew around here. Just, I better watch what I'm saying, pull little things. But, you know, I, I'm so thankful my pastor, he stayed on my case all the time. I'll never forget, you know, we were having, uh, like, a, they were having invitation, you know, if they're doing in the Baptist church like I grew up, you know, we always had Just As I Am with that one play they'd sing every time. And, you know, they'd open the pastor, stand down there and just invite people to come make the Lord, you know, Lord of their life, you know. And, won't you come, won't you come, you know, and, and I can remember one of my friends went down front out of the balcony, and, you know, I said, well, you know, that looks, that's something I might need to do. I, I think I'll go down there with him. So I went down there with him, prayed, and got baptized. And, you know, no, I wasn't saved. I didn't even know the Lord at that time. I was just kind of going through the process. And I think a lot of people do that. And then we were sitting in the, the, uh, the children's choir, the youth choir one year, 13 years old, and, uh, man, I realized I was lost. And I didn't have Christ as my Savior, and man, it was just man, it just it was just a floodgate for me. I just became very emotional, went down and and got saved, and I can remember getting baptized again, and I can remember preacher Vihan, that was his name, Louis Vihan, and uh, he said, Mike, now you just can't be making this a habit coming and getting baptized all the time. <laughs> I said, no, it means something this time, Pastor, but you know, he stayed on my case all the time, but. You know, I'm thankful for that. And I look back and uh, sometimes you need somebody to get on your case. Yes, you do. You know, it says a wise man can take rebuke and become wiser still. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've learned, you know, to, uh, when somebody's correcting me, if it's done in love. Now, if you're throwing stones at me while you're trying to correct me, I might not take it so well. But if somebody <laughs> is really trying to encourage you and minister to you and, and maybe point yes. some areas of weakness out in your life or some things that they see. A lot of times people can see things in your life that you can't see because you're so close to what you're dealing with that, you know, it's hard to take instruction. But if you'll open your heart up and take that instruction, God can lead you and guide you. And it can, uh, it can, it can cause you, it can keep you from a lot of heartache and a lot of pain. And so I'm thankful for that. I, I never, after that picture that Jim just showed up, I remember going back to the Baptist church and I was just, I gave Louis Vihan just a big, uh, or Pastor Vihan a big hug and I don't know how much uh, trouble I caused him. I was sorry for it, but I was thankful that, you know, that he did things for me in my life and was strict on me. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you need those standards in your life. Amen? Amen. It's like a tomato plant. If you don't have a standard, uh, you know, it's just going to, the, the fruit's going to rot on the ground, right? So you got to have a standard in your life, and that's what we need. Amen?